Huh. All right, here we go. What's up, guys? Lando here. Welcome to another video. If you're new, I make all sorts of guitar lessons. I make guitar chord videos. I do covers. And really, just uh, at this point, whatever I find interesting or whatever you request, because my channel's pretty small, so I'm just having a good time. So if you're in for that, go ahead and subscribe. And today, our video is how to play like Kelsey Ayer. I think that's how you say his name. I looked all over online for an interview or something where I could hear someone pronounce his name, but I didn't find anything, so that's my guess. But anyways, he is the lead singer for the band Local Natives. It's an indie band. And then he also has his own project that he released as Jaws of Love, self-titled album. And then there's a song on that album called Love Me Like I'm Gone. That's his most popular song. And I've been learning that song because I'm going to do a cover of it. And the way that he plays in this song is so cool. I just wanted to share that with you along the journey and give you some tips on finger picking and sounding like him because he sounds great. So check out my puppy just because why not? Bear, you're so weird. Watch me. Josiah, if you're watching this, thanks for the coffee, man. Josiah's my buddy, he's got a music studio and I work with him on the guitar end of things. So I guess I'll link anything that he has in the description. But anyways, let's get to the topic at hand. So what I really wanted to do when I'm learning this cover is sound as much like the recording as I can, but recording has two guitars on it, separate on the left and the right, and one of them's actually sounds like a nylon string guitar, which is sweet. But I'm just one person, I'm gonna do it live, so I want to make sure that I can recreate the best complete sound that I can. So I watched how he plays it live, I learned the chords that he does, but I also changed a few of them a little bit to add in a few of the extra notes that he accomplishes by putting two guitars on the track. So I'll get into that when we break down the chords, and then also so on the finger picking side of things, I'm gonna take you through steps to get you to the final product. And one of the hardest things that is included in this is thumping the guitar for a backbeat as you play. And when he does this live, he's only doing it on the four. But on the record, it sounds like there's either a kick or maybe he's thumping the guitar on the two and the four. I wanted to make sure I included that without losing the overall fullness of the guitar sound itself. So let's get right into it. I got five steps for you working on how to play this. All right, so step number one, gonna be pretty obvious, learn the chords. Luckily I did this work for you. I looked at the live videos to see all the chords that he's playing. So I'm gonna teach you what I'm gonna be playing in the cover, which allows me to play a few of the notes that the second guitar is playing as well. So chord number one is the four chord, it's a G. And I should mention this is in drop D. So tune your low string down to D. And always make sure you check all of your strings because when you tune one of them, it changes tension across the board and all of your strings go out of tune a little bit. So tune everything. So chord number one, we're gonna have our ring finger down here on the fifth fret of the low E string, which is a G now since we're tuned down. Then we're gonna have our first finger here on the third fret of the B string, second finger on the third fret of the G string, and fourth finger up on the high E string, fifth fret. I'm gonna play the A string, so pick each one of those out, except for the A string, and make sure they sound good. Next chord is the one chord, because we're in the key of D here. It's gonna be a D major seven. Super easy here, just one finger. We're gonna bar the G, B, and E strings. And you can pick every single note in the chord. And you can pick every single note in the chord. Beautiful. Now the next chord is gonna be an E minor seven. Now the way he actually plays it is a little bit easier, but we're gonna change it up. It's gonna be a little more difficult my way, but I'll show you this way in case you wanna do it this way. So you're barring the entire second fret here. And then we're gonna put ring finger on the fourth fret of the G string, and then second finger on the third fret of the B string. So this might be a little bit more difficult. If you need, 
you can just use your thumb on the second fret of the root and you'll be picking that. And your first finger will be on the second fret of the high E here. But you're just gonna have to be more careful when you're picking. And to change this up and make it a little bit more difficult, yeah, great, make the most difficult chord more difficult, we're gonna have our pinky on the fourth fret of the G string. Second finger is gonna be staying here on this third fret of the B string. And then third finger is going on the third fret of the high E string. So that's, it's like your E minor seven shape up here. <laughs> it's being used as the three chord, which is usually a minor chord. And it's like a minor chord, but it has a six interval. So we could call it an F sharp minor six, or we could call it a D major nine with an F sharp in the bass. It's an acting three chord. First finger is going to be playing only the fourth fret on the low E string, no barring this time. Then we're going to be on the sixth fret with our third finger on the G string, and then the second finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the B string. We're not playing the A string, so you can pick those five notes out. This is step number one. So you want to make sure you can effectively switch between these chords in a pretty good manner of time. So I would even break out a metronome, set it up to like 50, 60 BPM, and just go to town on those chords. That's just the first part of the song. We'll get into some more of the chords later. We'll get into the rest of the chords later, but I'm gonna use this section to teach from, and then I'll show you the rest of the chords for the song at the end. So that's step number one. Step number two, we're gonna start breaking into this finger picking pattern. You're gonna be using your thumb. You're gonna be alternating between the root and the fifth or the acting fifth because we're just gonna be playing whatever notes happen to be ending up on the D and G strings. So let's take the G chord as an example. So we're gonna be starting with our thumb on the root note, the G. It's gonna pick that and it's gonna alternate up to the D and G string. In this case, you're actually kind of giving it a strum rather than just picking one note. So every time you move up, you're giving a little bit of a strum, give it a full sound. It sounds like this. And going through all of the chords, I want you to take it slow, set a metronome, 50, 60 BPM, and it's gonna sound like this going through all of your chords. That's the bottom end of it. That's step number two. Step number three is now gonna be adding in your first finger. That's the way he plays it. When I was actually learning it, I was using my first two fingers because that's the way I'm most comfortable with finger picking. And then I worked into his method with using only really the first finger, maybe a little bit of add-ons. It's really not specific because it's different every time, but I'm just giving you the basis to work from. But really what the first finger is doing, or your first two if that's the way you want to play it, you're gonna be picking the high note right with the bass. And then when you do that little strum with your thumb, you pick it again before you go back down to the bass. So I'd say aim a little bit lower for the B string right before that second strum. So we got bass and high note together. I told you to break out the metronome it might have been a little bit quicker just getting into the groove but this is where you're really gonna want to slow it down break it down take some time and especially across those chord changes you're gonna want to put in the effort to make sure they're clean make sure you can do it so I'm gonna do it once nice and slow along with the metronome to get you going in and if you can do it along with me from this speed this is a great starting point point. and if you need to start slower or even work off the metronome to make sure that your fingers can actually complete this in an effective manner do that first and then add the metronome but we'll do a little tester here so you can find out just exactly where you're at we'll be at 50 beats per minute So 
knows 50 beats per minute and obviously when you listen to it there's a lot of variation you can pick up on that with your ear I'm just teaching you the basics and you'll see which ones I choose to do and which fills I put into the song when I release my cover so I told you to use a metronome a few times but now the actual step is using the metronome to put all of these things together and get it right up to speed now when I tapped it in it was right around 87 88 beats per minute for the actual song so I'll give you an example with a metronome of about how that feels and then we'll get into the final step that really adds some life into this <laughs> great once you got that done you could pretty much play it but the extra sauce is the thump now the way that we're gonna be doing this is by tapping on the guitar right around the pick guard with one or more of your fingers middle finger is usually the best you can get the best thump there because it's the largest finger and there's usually the most support behind it but you can kind of put them all together to make a nice little thump. The tricky part about this is going to be not disrupting your playing. So I think the best way to start adding this in is on the four like he does on the live recording because if you completely skip picking your notes on the fourth beat, it doesn't lose as much as if you were to skip on the second beat. So if I were to count it out nice and slow, see if I can count and play at the same time. progression it would be uh, so that's what it would sound like if you were to replace the fourth beat with just a thump and the really tricky part is actually going to be picking the fifth in the middle range on the D string and the G string at the same time as thumping it without overdoing your pick with the thumb and without underdoing the thump. So you, what you really want to do is just practice that a little bit, hitting the strings with your thumb and thumping the pick guard at the same time. You don't, even, you don't even have to be playing anything. I just want you to develop a nice sound where you can target both of those things at the correct velocity. You don't want to be hearing the slapping on the strings. And you don't want your thump to be just a little boop. I guess you you could fix that in post if you needed to, but just for playing with your friends and kind of stuff, you want to at least be able to hear it. So once you can do that, you're going to start adding it onto the two and the four. Every time you're hitting that backbeat on the two and the four with your thumb, you're thumping the pick guard. And you'll work that in with a metronome. I'm going to set mine to 60 for an example. But this final step, step number five, is using a metronome with your thumps to get it up to the final tempo, which is about 87, 88 BPM. fills but that's your last one and then ultimately you're gonna be sounding like this or hopefully better hopefully the angle didn't change too much there my phone just quit on me so I just deleted like 700 different attachments in my messages time to buy more iCloud storage but anyways I promised here are the rest of the chords in the song and then we'll get out of here so we have this nice little G chord here that he takes this takes us into the chorus it's our little interlude we're gonna have the first finger still on the low G third finger on the seventh fret of the G string and then our fourth finger seventh fret of the high E and then the switch that we make here is taking the fourth finger down to the B string same fret sounds like this and then we go 
down to play E minor, similar fashion type of stuff, except for our fourth finger is on the fifth fret and our third finger is on the fourth fret. Sounds like this. That phrase sounds like and then we go into the chorus these great six intervals up top on top of the chords B minor here we're gonna have the second finger on the tenth fret of the high E and then our third finger is gonna be on the eleventh fret of the G string and then we're just holding the bass note here it's gonna be ninth fret on the low E sounds like this that's our minor six interval, and as we move it down to the A, we're taking a major six interval, which just has the fourth finger on the same fret as the third finger. In this case, it is the ninth fret, and your bass is seventh fret. And then we go down to G, same as before. That one holds out for two extra measures, doing that little switch that we did before, and I'll show you how that goes right now. fun learning this song and teaching it to you i'm excited to make the cover i'll be singing the song and if you stayed this far thanks for watching the entire thing leave a comment below let me know what kind of guitar songs you would be interested in learning from me and if there are any chords you want to learn i'd be happy to do chord videos i put them out several times a week just as shorts so if you want to increase your chord knowledge base so take it easy get some coffee and have an awesome week see you in the next one